Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dirty Yoshi, bringing you another Team Pub Watch game. Today we'll be watching MBN up against Wow. Wish I had, wish I could find out the full names, but unfortunately I can't quite. And on the team map we have Pio playing in the safe lane, tri lane. Captain, uh, I can't read his name for that. Hots playing on the Kotal, We have on the Earth Shaker, we have Sander HT playing in the mid Storm Spirit. We have Olinhos, and finally in the jungle, Nature's Prophet playing, being played by Lenaru. On the day team, we have the Captain Rubik being played by Neon, Chen being played by Ofrenda. On the Magnus in mid lane, we have Brazil left hand. We got the Lone Dragon, <laughs> like Thorpe, being played top lane, free farm top lane by Barrel. And finally, we have the off lane suicide being played by Moon Madness on the Lone Druid. Look at the lineups already. Uh, wait, actually, let's look at the last hits. Last hits, we got the Chen on the lead, sitting on 10. Like and Thorpe, sitting on 8 for 4, free farming up top. Fortunately, missing. A few creep kills here and there under the tower. We have Magnus doing good 9 for 4 against uh, Storm Spirit 7 for 2 in mid lane. Storm Spirit's going to. Uh, doesn't have a bottle yet, but he will be picking up the throne. Magnus went for the early bottle. Double two charges left damage. in there. Down in bottom lane here, we have Blackenthorpe surprise. Oh, not Blackenthorpe. <laughs> Lone Druid. Oh, this isn't going to be a fun game. Well, Lone Druid sitting on 4 for 0. It's got more for. More than the uh, support so far, and about as much as the Nature's Prophet, who has rotated into the jungle. His XP is being cut a little short, but you would expect that on a lane like this. Probably would like to see Coddle come over here and get ready to stack these camps here. Lone Druid's Bear's coming down to try and intercept some creeps. We have a little harassment going on in the mid lane with the double damage Storm Spirit. Giving that Magnus a little bit of bit of run for his money. Try to try to push him out of the lane. Just gonna tango that back up. Got his bottle probably on the courier, ready to come back to him, but it's just sitting there at the moment. He should really be sending it back to him. He'll need that bottle very shortly if he wants to try and stay in this lane. Over top lane here, Chen's having a nice time in the jungle. I'd like to see him pick up another creep. Hopefully, try and find. Oh. Uh, yeah. Not many too too good creeps at the moment. He does have the centaur stun. Um, pick up another creep and look to come smoke up gank in the jungle. Oh, he can only have one at the moment. But he did gank. Oh, we missed the first one in the middle. Sorry, guys. Storm Spirit does fall to the final attack from the tower. Magnus did do enough damage for that Storm Spirit to take enough damage. Chen and Rub Rubik are rotating through the secret shop trying to find. Absolutely no one who's sitting here. They're gonna be just waiting, waiting for something to happen. Just wasting time at the moment. Could be in the jungle, getting a few creep stacks, pulling, double stacking. However, they're just sitting here, waiting for nothing. Maybe waiting for mid, but their smoke's gonna run out. They might try and get an early tower here. Magnus picks up the illusion rune in his bottle. Top towers. The health has gone off. Top tower's gonna to fall pretty fast. Rubik taking a few attacks. Back and forth gets the final hit of the tower. Gonna to pick up either full boots, maybe Russian armlet. We'll see where he wants to go at the moment. Could go any direction. But he he's level six, who needs boots? How, do you likely see that sometimes from now and again? People don't really worry too much about the boots because they do have that ultimate form and they don't expect to be ganked anytime soon. Uh, Earth Shaker and the Coddle TP in and top doesn't have enough to get off that fissure which is unfortunate because they could have done a bit of damage to Radiant maybe have picked off the Rubik not too likely though down in bottom lane we have Lone Druid sitting on five creep kills now you'd like to see him a bit more into the lane a bit now since they have seen the two supports rotate top lane but he hopefully should get a um, few creep kills now as I say that, he he misses that creep kill on the uh, and that one. 
might get this one. This is not gonna get this one. Okay, he's gonna miss all the creeps under his tower. That's about ten creeps that he could have had. He got at least one. Good on him. Got at least one creep kill. We have a smoke up by Rubik and Chen. Looking to rotate middle lane. They have a satire. Hopefully get a shockwave off that burst of 125 damage. It's not substantial, but I do not think it's what they need, especially against a Storm Spirit who now has his ult up and running full mana. He'll be going to dispel the smoke, gets thrown up, shockwave comes through, he's just going to TP on the hill. Not much to do. Magnus couldn't get in range with his skewer to get off the reverse polarity. They might look to push this, or they're just going to rotate bottom to help out bottom. Chen might have a look through their forest, see what they have. Gotta be careful with this Nature's Prophet, who's picked up his Ring of the Basilisk and will be going for his Hand of Midas. He should have his Hand of Midas up and running in about... It's enough 600 gold, 500 gold. Should have that up and running in about 2 minutes. So it's not extremely fast, but it is useful. He TPs in the mid, Storm Spirit grabs the Chen. Chen's gonna fall here. Magnus comes in, reverse polarity. Got a, doesn't have enough for a shockwave. Chen falls, Fisher comes through. Magnus is in deep trouble right now. He's going to get slowed down. Might get pulled back. Zip through. Final hit. Comes from the Keeper of the Light. Getting the final hit. That was unfortunate for WoW. They had initiation. Great RP, but Magnus just didn't have enough mana to keep going. Chen was caught out of position. And there's just enough burst out. Enough. Constant damage from MBN to keep going, following through on that. As we have Magnus TPing back in mid. Illuminate's got to come through and just be a general pain. Magnus just dodges the Illuminate. We have Rubik rotating bottom. Maybe setting up a ward. Look to counter ward as well, maybe check. There we go. Check the counter ward, make sure they have no wards up and running. However, they do have a ward up here. Pretty... Uh, aggressive and defensive ward at the same time, and both both sides have a ward up on this, the Radiant Side's cliff, Ancient's cliff. Blackenthorpe is getting really, really strong up in the lane. He's not being harassed, he's been able to just f solely free farm. He's got 49 creep, because then down the bottom lane we see Phantom Lads are killing the Lone Druid. Fisher came through, but Fisher came through, Illuminate probably hit as well, and then Phantom Lads' Lance would have just taken the bear down. Not sure if he was in his ulti form or not. If he was in his ulti form, he probably would have, may have survived. But unfortunately, he did not survive. Up at top lane, we have Kotal and Nature's Prophet looking to hopefully stop Wackenthorpe's free file. Wackenthorpe did have to ult and run away from the Illuminate and the Nature's Prophet. But I don't see them getting a kill on. Wackenthorpe any time soon, so he might get killed by a neutral though. One lucky one lucky bounce of that wrath's wrath of nature could kill the Wackenthorpe. He might get himself killed if he's not too careful from these creeps. Help plan. It just profits almost got his Midas. Definitely help him. Get up and running. He's got enough to buy it now. Double damage activated by the Storm Spirit. And he's also smoked up. Looking to rotate bottom. Hopefully get another kill on the Swan Druid. Keep him down and out. Roots up and running for him and his bear. He's got the Orb of Venom. Top tower is likely to fall very shortly. Wrath of Nature coming through just to finish off those creeps. Top tower will fall. We see Chen trying to rotate top, but he better be careful or he will be caught out by... Oh, he's got TP support coming in by the Magnus. Magnus has got to look. Rubik's also coming in. Will he burst his RP for this? He's looking at it. He's now trapped in trees. Skewers through. Might need to RP. RPs to get the final kill. And they get the kill on the Nature's Prophet. Four heroes come top for the kill on the Nature's Prophet. It's not going to... It's not looking to be worth it as bottom lane will, if they want to, get this tower down. Still keep, keep getting XP everywhere, but... In the end, uh, MBN's gonna make up for it, pick up the tower of their own. We see the difference in XP. 
the XP of the Radiant is slowly moving back down to the Dire. Wow, let's try to pull that XP back in, into their advantage. Gold moved back into the Radiant with the Trade of Towers then. Storm here. Spirit jumps all the way over to the Rune, picks up the Haste. <laughs> Not sure if it was that worth it for him to just completely jump over there, especially when they saw three people here. With Chen almost dead. Could see a TP coming in from the Nature's Prophet behind. Try and pick him off. Especially if the Magnus rotated out, that's very likely. Also, the Storm Spirit's waiting on the side, waiting for a little opening, but Wow's going to back off. Rightfully so. Nature's Prophet being really aggressive here, trying to get that tower down. It's going to almost put in Denier. It's got Storm Spirit jumping in. He doesn't have enough for that Electric Vortex. Not going to be able to pull him back. Rubik's almost got that level 6. He really wants that level 6 up and running so he can grab something big. Maybe a Fissure. A Fissure on Rubik is just... It's instant cast. Chaotic. Just a pain to deal with in general. Fissure's, Fissure's a great move, but it's really, really hard. Especially when you're of Earth Shaker Wan. You can only cast one in a fight and then that's it. At least with a Rubik, he grabs that Fissure. He's got a fantastic AoE stun. He's got a Lift, Fade Bolt, and just the magic resistance he'll offer to his team. So if Rubik can pick off the Fissure, massive swing could turn it into Wow's favor. Rubik tip in middle, just gone daytime, so they can they can see across the room. They'll be able to see this. Rubik will be looking to ward again down bottom. Probably drop down a counter ward as well and get this counter ward. He's rotated back mid, being careful of his Magnus. There is an Earthshaker Fissure here, and you'd usually presume, if there's an Earthshaker looming around, you'd usually presume there's another support sitting with him, or a carry, and Storm Spirit has got a regen in a bottle, so his mana will be up very, very fast, very shortly. We can see him pop that off in a second. Earthshaker's sitting on level, will be level 8 now, got level 4 of his Fissure, picks up one of his Enchant Totem. He's got 1200 to go for his... Blink Dagger, Blink Druid's pop, pops off his battle cry to get away, might lose his bear here, he turns his bear around and it gives the gold away to the PL. Top tower is under attack. At top lane here we have Lycanthorpe being really aggressive here on the tower, gets spread up, vortexed by the SS, he's going to try and ult out, will he get the Fissure comes through, finishes off. Lackenthorpe. He was way overextended. They don't have vision on this top lane here. And they did get middle tower, but it's worth it. Pick off that Lackenthorpe who's been free farming all game for that middle middle tower. Definitely a great trade by MBN. Lackenthorpe was extremely overextended. You might see oh Lone Druid kills off the PL, who's probably getting way too overcocky, especially if Lone Druid going down on Going down in health, but the armor and health pool he gets from being in that bear form is just deceptively a lot. We have Coddle TPing in bottom, we have Magnus TPing out. Oh, they're all on the side, they could get this Coddle. Oh, oh, that was unfortunate by MBN. But there's kill up at top lane, Nature's Prophet falls to the counter of Magnus and the Lycanthorpe. Earthshack is on the run, he's gonna get out fine. Back down in bottom lane, we have the Illuminate killing off one of Chen's creeps, he's Centaur. We still have Wildwing running around, look at that bird go. Lance comes out onto the Rubik, Rubik's not going to survive. Dust goes off, but he lifts up the wrong wrong hero. The Chen heal comes out, it's going to keep him alive, he's going to get out. He's got 5 seconds for his doppel walk, he's got to be careful. He's got 3, 2, 1, he's got to get the doppel walk off. He's gonna should get out of there pretty fine. No revelation, revelation. It's on cooldown by the Chan, which is unfortunate. Middle tower falls to the Nature's Prophet, picking up an extra tower, giving their team a lot more map control. He'll be teleporting out. Magnus comes in, grabs him with the skewer. Shockwave comes through. Doesn't need to RP. Should be able to just kill him normally. Beautiful entangled by the bear. and Jordan picks up the kill. Total. 200 gold away from his mechanism. Make that 350 gold away from his mechanism. Or just 300 gold. 
Once you see that mechanism get picked up, you'll see probably MBN start grouping up. Him, Earthshaker, Nature's Prophet, MPL start grouping up, try and push down these second towers, even go up top and get this final tower. Could see Nature's Prophet TP top in a second, help out the Storm Spirit going top, because they can see the three three members of WoW down bottom. And Lone Druid just running in, balls to the wall. Very not the right choice here. Earthshaker's Shockwave goes, Echo Slam goes flying out to finish off that Lone Druid. That was a very poor call by the Lone Druid. And the Rubik now falls due to the Lance. That was a very, very poor call by WoW. They should have just backed, they shouldn't have fought. PL now has picked up his Radiance, going for the Extreme Fire Build. The Fission misses, but it's going to trap him in, especially with that Lance Illusion. SS comes flying in. Will it's Popsy sh oh, Popsy RP, but he's going to get Vortex in. He's not going to get those final two kills with the Shockwave. That's unfortunate. If he got those final two kills, the fight could have been almost worth it, but it just went downhill. The Lone Druid, Moon Madness, should not have ran up like he did. He was way too aggressive, overextended. They did not have vision of up here because it did get counter warded. And they knew there was multiple heroes up there, especially with the Fissure come and fly through and then eliminate. But Lone Druid just kept running on in, trying to force the initiation, and it went, went sour. And in the meanwhile, Nature Prophet goes top, gets the top tower down, and you'll be able to see them rotate middle, try and get some damage into onto this tower. Oh, oh no, they'll just rotate backwards. Never mind, don't don't worry, don't listen to what I say. Good ward coming up from the Radiant. Oh, the tire, sorry. Wow's doing some aggressive wards, making sure they can watch watch where they are around here. They're not too worried about the top rune, but they Whereas um the the Radiant will want to see into that jungle, want to see when they're moving around. Got got wards on both of the river positions. PL's got his vitality booster up, will be working towards that heart. Only another four and a half K to go. <laughs> Magnus walking to bottom lane. He's he's got his blink dagger up, looking forward to him skewing, he's gonna miss. Miss the shockwave and the uh, um, skewer, but they've got the dust out over on the PL. PL's not going to survive this. Great dust, fade bolt, and the shockwave come through. Nature's Prophet Raph and Nature comes bouncing through, doesn't do too much damage. Must have just stopped or ran out of targets as it got to this situation. Phantom Lancer buys back, and he's going to be recalled into the fight. It's going to be a three on three fight. Where's going to back off? They know he brought back, they know the Coddle probably brought him back in. They're not going to try and force, especially when they when they're all roughly half health. Cole's now got his mech up. Oh, Storm Spirit zips in, grabs the Chen. Chen's not going to have the turn around. He's got to stun. He's used his ult. It's gone. He's fallen from the fight. The RP comes firing off. We will see a skewer. Skewer goes back in. Echo Slam comes out. Shockwave comes through. Storm Spirit's going to survive. He's got enough to zip away again if he needs to. He's got his vortex up in two. He's Stack Remnant up shortly. Rubik falls in the back lines to the PL. PL's been entangled. They're trying to get him off. The dust goes off. Will they be able to get those final two? Will they get a lucky tank? Shockwave comes through. Lack and throw ults up. Not going to be needed. Coddle's now completely out of position. He's going to try and TP out. Do they have anything to stop him? The entangle from the bear comes out. Oh, the entangle. Ice Rogue, please nerf. <laughs> but that was, that was an overextension by NBN. So I'm sure just gonna walk away. We could if we look at the XP graft. XP graft's not too bad. Neither the gold though is quite in favour of NBN. But uh, with this Roshan going down, both should be swinging back in favour. Swinging back to wow. Black and thought. Yep, Black and thought picked up the Aegis. He's got his Necro book up and running. Level one, I believe. Yep, level one Necro book. He'll Magnus TP him back to base. He'll be looking forward to this juicy farm in middle. He's empowered, doing 187 damage per attack. He's going to be loving that. Beautiful creep kills. He's sitting on 135 creep kills with PL sitting on only 113. Oh, 117. I was looking at the Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet 113. If look at the net worth. PL is in the lead with the amount of items he has. 
He is sitting from 8 for 3, where Lackenthorpe is 0 for 1. So Lackenthorpe hasn't been able to get any kills yet. He hasn't... He's starting to hit his prime. He's got his Necro book up. He's got his Vlads. Might look to see him again. He really needs to pick up a BKB soon. Storm Spirit might find Lackenthorpe in the jungle. He's going to walk past him in the night vision. Not going to be able to see him. Lackenthorpe now sees this. He might ult up. Sprout goes out onto the... Onto the Lone Druid. Lackenthorpe comes in. He's two hits. Three hits. Nature Prophet falls. Storm Spirit's going to try and get out of here. He uses all his mana. He'll be, he'll be fine. He's going to get out of there. TP in from... Blink comes in from the Magnus. Not going to be able to get that skewer off or a lift. He got the skewer off. Lift's not going to be able to follow it up. Chen sends the Lone Druid back to base. It was unfortunate for NBN. They, I guess they were a little overextended, not out to see it. Rubik has picked up that fissure. That's beautiful. Echo Slam comes flying through. Death Order damage with the Illuminate come through. And Storm's going to have to zip on out of there. PL farming up in the jungle. Still trying to look for... He still needs another 1500 to get that uh, Reaver. Illuminate hits on the Magnus. Hits on the poor troll. Back and thought, looking at going down, maybe stack these camps. Will he stack the camps? He's just gonna walk past. He's not gonna worry too much about it. Should have came down and stacked these chats when he had a chance, but not everyone can be watching the timer, especially not when you're in game when there's lots of other things going on in your mind. Positioning where heroes are, the captain calling out commands or orders, or offering friendly advice, whatever you want to call it. Storm Spirit picks up the regen rune. He goes zipping towards. Squats those runes, even if he doesn't need to. We'll be seeing an engagement down bottom. Fissure comes out trying to lay the push as much as possible. <coughs> Illuminate will be coming through to destroy those creeps. Storm Spirit zipping around while he's got the regen, having a little bit of fun. Magnus comes in. He's got Vortex back. Phantom Lance comes out. He skews away the illusion. He's now been sprouted up. Sorcerer comes flying through. RP used on the PL. PL might fall. Hand of God comes out from the Chen. Magnus is still going to fall. They're not going to be able to get the Nature's Prophet. Dark Troll Summoner is not going to be able to get the net off. Still chasing on the Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet's going to get entangled. Nature's Prophet falls. The mech comes out, keeping Rubik alive. Storm Spirit's going to fall as well. PL's just going to have to retreat. We see a TP coming in from the Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet's cancel it. It's going to go top and get the top tower. That was a great fight by WoW. Great heals by the Chen, trying to keep him alive. Unfortunately, Magnus still fell, but he got he got the reverse player off. He got the skewer, he got the shockwave. He took a lot of the brute damage, a lot of the spells. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough for NBN to survive. Great fight by WoW. Look at XP and XP graph. XP graph has swung back to pretty pretty even now, I'd say. Nature's Prophet sprouts up on the Lackenthorpe. He's is he gonna be able to get him? Lackenthorpe can easily just ult up and run away here. Nature's Prophet's gonna go for that final attack. He's got another sprout ready. He's just gonna ult off. Fortunately, he's not gonna be able to get it. He gets caught by the Chen's creeps. Chen's creeps just completely out of position. Peel's gonna farm these out for that little bit of extra gold. Unfortunately, he's gonna lose his centaur and his troll. Two pretty great creeps. Still chasing down the centaur. Centaur turns around and wants to be a man, but it's not going to work. The villain druid farming up in top lane. He's got his armor on his burr. Currently sitting on 2,600. Might see him go towards the Maelstrom build. Mm. We'll look to see where he's going very soon with that. Back and Thorpe got level 3 of Necromicon. Necrobook. Aegis will probably be expiring soon. Yep, Aegis will be gone in about... Uh, about a minute. So gotta be careful of what fights they choose to initiate and how hard he wished to go into that fight. He's got his Empower buff up, giving him 200 damage. And with the increased critical strike chance with his Shapeshift, that's gonna be hitting very, very hard early on. We have the Wildkin just being a general pain in the ass with that tornado. Phantom Lance is trying to kill it. Takes about 200 damage in the meanwhile. He's picked up his Revo. So he's got about 700 gold to go till he has the art up and running. Fissure comes through. Gotta be careful that Rubik does not steal that Fissure. He's currently got 
chakra magic. That's even better. Especially on a Rubik. Keep that mana up on him at all times. Fade bolt in shockwaves. They're looking to force this fight before the Aegis runs out. Brighton Light comes flying through. Our peak on two. Skewer, shockwave. That's Earthshaker and the Cold of Fallen. Fissure also hits the SS. SS is going to lift it up. Fade Bolt is zipping all the way out. He should be fine here. They're not going to chase him. Necrobox Summon. Two for zero. Middle tower is going to fall pretty fast. Nature's Prophet is trying to trade tower. Force the TPs back. Force the TP back of Magnus. Nature's Prophet still not scared. He's man fighting up. He's missed two. Missed three. Missed four. He's just missing all those attacks. If he, those, yeah, if he had those extra attacks, he would have killed off the Magnus, especially if he had more creeps for the ult to bounce to between. Mid tower falls on the Radiant side, and they're looking forward to push this mid tower. Nature's Prophet will need to TP in, or they're just going to lose the both fracks, but he's TP top to try and push the top tower. Not a wise decision. PL's got no mana, needs the chakra from the Coddle. The range backs is going to fall from the change creeps. The chakra magic comes out onto the Lackenthorpe. Lackenthorpe's still got enough to ult up. The PL illusion doing havoc against the Rubik. Chen falls. Nature's Prophet gets the tower up on top lane. Fissure comes out onto the Rubik. One last hit, one last fence. Let's get the final kill. The Vortex comes out onto the Lone Druid. Lone Druid's going to fall as well. Yep, Lone Druid falls to the Lance from the Phantom Lancer. Lance is going to love those extra kills he just picked up. They only got the ranged racks. If they'd got the melee racks, sure it would have been a worthy trade, but they only got the ranged racks. That's unfortunate. Nature Prophet also got the top tower, came in to help continue support. In the end, it was a good choice by Nature Prophet to get that tower. And especially since it was only a ranged rack that that they lost. Heart, will we looking to come on to the courier? Yep. Heart's coming on the courier to the PL now. He's got another 1k banked up. He'll be picking up his blade of Alkari. Alcarity, so he could be looking forward to pick, uh, moving back to pick up his Diffusal. Chen coming in. He's not too sure what he can do, especially if all these illusions don't to multiply after Radiance Burn. We have the RP up on Magnus. Skewer back. He's got the right here. Will the RP to use this? He's lifted it up and up in the air. He's skewered. Skewered. RP on two. He's got another Shockwave. Another Shockwave. Mech comes through, it's going to save PL. Cottle might fall very shortly. The Binding Light comes through. PL's going to run off. He doesn't have a TP, but he does have the heart. Echo Slam coming in, killing the Chen. Fissure coming through, killing the Rubik. PL finishes off the Magnus. Rubik bites back, TP's in. We hear an SS going off on the side. SS finishes off the Lackenthorpe. Lance comes out onto the Rubik. Rubik's going to lift up the right one. Zip comes flying in through the Storm Spirit. Nature's Prophet actually picks up the kill on the Rubik. And Lucky and Tangle, is he going to be able to get the final kill? No, he should turn around and run away while he still can. Fissure comes through, Lance comes out. Lone Druid's overextending. What should not have done the zip in from the... From the Lone Druid. And because of that, he forced the two light buybacks of his Chen and Lackenthorpe. Because he overextended, got cocky. He forced two buybacks of two of his heroes. And... That's going to really hurt them, especially since Chen had about 15 seconds left on his buyback. Oh, on his respawn timer. Just wasted. Probably spent about 700 gold on that buyback. Could have went to something more useful, like a few wards. Maybe start working towards his boots, smoke. Looking at the net worth gold here, we still have PL sitting on top of the scoreboard of 14,500 gold. Nature Prophet sitting just behind him. I can fall not too far behind either. He's got a good farm going on, but he's just been being caught out. He really needs that BKB up and running. Is he building towards BKB? No, he's he's just gonna forego the BKB entirely. Go for a hyperstone. Look towards get the um, demonic or assault curious. Sorry, going to pick up the assault curious. I don't think he'd go for the Majonia. Um, he could. Might be likely to pick up the Majonia, but more likely to go for the Assault Curious for the extra armor for his team, the attack, and minimize some of the armor to make the supports even more squishy, and hope and hopefully destroy PL's naturally high armor with 1400. He's currently almost got his Diffusal sitting in base, just needs a few more gold, and he's got his Diffusal up and running. His illusions will start destroying some people. There we go. The fuse all picked up. 
Nature's Prophet TPing down to Roshan. We'll start at Roshan. But then also at the same time, Wales looking to do Roshan too. So they're going to see this Nature's Prophet in there. They're going to try and get him early, but they don't. They have a ward here trying to check, but. Nature's Prophet's running. He's not looking to be on the defensive. Top Tower is being pushed in by NBN. With the last hits, PL, Nature's Prophet, and the Lackanthorpe are all within 20, 20 kills of each other, so they've all got a pretty solid farm going on. Magnus blinks in. Unfortunately, his dust is not going to be in range of the Nature Prophet. He's going to sneak on out of there, the sneak or whatever he is. Counterward by Rubik. See, here a shockwave go flying through. Na Wrath of Nature comes flying through to try and keep the lanes pushed in and that little bit of extra damage. Radiance Burn doing damage on this Chan. Lone Druid's going to fall. He's not going to get away from it. Oh, Hand of God comes out, saves Lone Druid. One more lance, so it's going to finish him off. This is not looking too good at the moment. Fate Bolt comes flying through. Rubik steals the Illuminate. He's channeling the Illuminate, but he's going to get destroyed by the Phantom Lancer and his Diffusal Blade. Nature's Prophet falls to the bottom lane. Falls up near the fountain, actually. RP comes through onto one. Fisher comes flying through to counteract that RP. We hear the mech going off. Magnus is going to fall to the Diffusal Blade of the PL and the Radiance Burn. We have... Blackenthorpe defending the barracks. He's just standing. There we go. He starts moving again. All oh, his creeps going to come flying through. He's going to man fight up against. He's not going to be able to do it. He's taking a lot of damage real fast from that diffusal blade of all the illusions. Middle tower's going to fall. Bottom tower's fallen. Bottom racks have fallen. Nature's Prophet uh, buys back. He's going to TP and try and finish off these extra racks. And this is looking to be a good game by a while. Oh, that was... That was... A lot going on there. I'm just gonna have PL back off. Just playing it safe. Keeper of the Light cannot pull him back in for another 22 seconds. He does have the boots. And the GG's get called by the Chan. And then Nature's Prophet picks off the Rubik on the side. It was a very, very good fight by, by NBN. They were falling behind a bit at the start. Wow's great pushing lineup. Especially with the Lackenthorpe and the Chan. However, there's some questionable plays by the Lone Druid running into areas he should not have been in. And he died a few extra times he shouldn't have. Put his farm behind a bit. Gave PL a bit of extra farm. Other than that, there wasn't too much. It was just a great team fight. PL got farmed heavy. And once he had his big items, there was nothing anyone else could do about it. Still trying to try to found to dive on him. A little bit of talk going on in chat. Talking about Skyrim, I don't know if that would be the Elder Scrolls game or just something in their native tongue. Skewer comes in onto the PL. Peel's not gonna die. Tower falls. Here an SS jump around everywhere. Picks up his picks up his bloodstone. When it comes flying through, Earthshake is going to fall after running into the fountain. And there we go, there goes the Ancient. Radiant Victory. Yep, <laughs> they were talking about the Elder Scrolls game. I, w I wasn't mistaken. Nice, nice rare given to. Who was that to? That was to the Storm Strait. Thank you for watching another Dota Yoshi commentary pub watch team game. And have a good one.